I want to talk to you about a particular issue, and that's the issue of um, Abdul Rashid Maina, the uh, alleged pension thief that was led back into the country. Now, I'm sure you know that the Buhari administration has, uh, well, not surprisingly, blamed uh, former President Jonathan for the whole scandal. They are, they are alleging that somehow uh, Jonathan, who left office uh, two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, is responsible for the whole uh, scandal. You know, they've forgotten that the, the, the Buhari-appointed um, Attorney General of the Federation, Malami, has actually literally made more or less a confession, actually admitting that, you know, he initiated the process um, uh, of bringing this fellow back. They're actually forgetting that uh, the, the Buhari-appointed uh, Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, General Dan Bazao, has actually made comments They've forgotten that these comments are contradicting their comments and they have no shame. They are trying to accuse pres former President Jonathan of being uh, behind uh, minors uh, reinstatement and their recall. Now, one thing you need to understand there is this, is that Mena was dismissed by the Jonathan administration. He was dismissed and then he was uh, declared wanted because he escaped. Now, this is former President Jonathan that did this. He dismissed Minor. The, the, Minor was declared wanted because he escaped. He escaped out of the country. He's been living in Dubai. Now, the man has come back, you know, under the Buhari administration. The Buhari administration appointed the head of the DSS. In fact, the head of the DSS is actually from his own village, Daora. The Buhari administration appointed the head of the EFCC, appointed the head of the Nigerian Immigration Service, appointed the heads of all the security agencies. But yet, this man cannot take responsibility. He's trying to blame Jonathan, who is there on his own in his house. Now, just imagine how shameless a government can be. Don't forget that the minor family, the minor family, they held a press conference, uh, I believe it was yesterday. They held a press conference and then they said that the Buhari administration actually invited Maina back to the country and they wanted him to come back to help them with their change agenda. This is the Maina family, the spokesman for the Maina family. You know, I believe his name was Aminu uh, Maina. You can Google his comments. Uh, just go online right now, Google his comments. And then this administration, they are not ashamed. They are trying to blame Jonathan for uh, the Maina issue. Can you just imagine that? You can just imagine that. And you know, the funniest thing is that Mena, a lot of you are just saying, okay, Mena was recalled, he was reinstated. No, he was also promoted. He was actually promoted. He was promoted two steps higher. He was actually promoted two steps higher by the Buhari administration. Now, you can begin to see the kind of administration that we have ruling us or uh, pretending to be governing us. An administration that does not have any iota of decency or credibility. And this is an administration that likes to point fingers at others, that likes to say that Jonathan is corrupt. This administration, if you, I mean, remember what uh, Senator Shehu Sani said, and thankfully, Senator Shehu Sani is a member of President Muhammad Buhari's own party, the All Progressive Congress. Senator Shehu Sani said that President Muhammad Buhari uses insecticides to fight corruption or alleged corruption in the uh, PDP and uses uh, deodorant to fight it in the presidency. Now, look at what's happening here. Hasn't Senator Shea Usani been, uh, um, hasn't he been vindicated? Look, this administration, don't forget, about two months ago, they returned 48 houses, 48 mansions to a guy called Timmy Pre Silva, an enemy of uh, Dr. Jonathan and a member of the APC who was alleged to have uh, uh, contributed significantly to the election of the president. Now, could you imagine that this could have happened under the Jonathan era? How could Timmy Pre Silva have alleged, illegally gotten 48 houses? This administration, the EFCC, they returned his 48 houses to him. Under this administration, don't forget, under this administration, the 25 billion NNPC contract saga is there. Some people, including me, believe that minor, that because of the NNPC 25 billion dollars scandal became too hot, that they actually sacrificed minor to the media so that minor's story will come out and everybody will start talking about minor and then they will forget the 25 billion dollar scam in the NNPC. Don't forget, in the history of Nigeria, this is the biggest corruption scandal ever. No other corruption scandal has ever been as big as this. And the second biggest was the 2.8 billion corruption uh, scandal in the same NNPC in 1978. And guess who was Minister of Petroleum then? The same man, Muhammad Buhari, who is Minister of Petroleum today. 
So ask yourself, begin to ask yourself questions. Is this administration co fighting corruption at all? Is this administration fighting corruption at all? Look, Senator Issa Miso, he just gave evidence yesterday at the Nigerian Senate. He gave evidence and he said that the first lady, now this is not me making this allegation. It is made, being made by a senator, a former policeman, and he made the allegation yesterday in the, at the National Assembly, at the Senate Pro Panel. He said the first lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari's wife, demanded for and got two SUVs from the Inspector General of Police for her private use. Now, could this have happened under the Jonathan era? And yet, these people are saying Jonathan is corrupt. They are saying Jonathan's government is clueless. Look, let's begin to ask questions, people. Let's begin to ask questions, people. What is happening now? Imagine, look, if Babachir Lawal, the former, or rather the suspended secretary to the government of the Federation, imagine if he was a PDP member. Over eight months has passed. This man's corruption has been lying there. Remember, the man was suspended. Now, this is the 10th month of the year. The, this incident happened in December, the, uh, the alleged uh, uh, um, uh, corruption. This is the 10th month of the year, October. Soon, we are going to enter November, the 11th month of the year. The pro panel submitted its report to President Muhammad Buhari. As a matter of fact, it was the vice president that submitted it to the president as soon as the president came back from, uh, from the United Kingdom. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is now about... Uh, um, Eight months after the man was removed from office, nothing has been done to the man. Now, ask yourself, if this man was a PDP member, would, would the same situation have been like this? Would the man still be walking around flexing? Would the man still be walking around free? Ask yourself that question. This man, the money that was stolen was money meant for IDPs. And that money was not even money that was brought by the Buhari administration. This was money that was provided by the Jonathan government because that government was a caring government. They held a victim support fund. They invited Dan Gote, they invited Illuminu, and altogether they raised 58 billion naira. Money for refugees from northern Nigeria where President Muhammad Buhari is. This was a, a southerner. Jonathan arranges this money for, for them. They lied. They used propaganda to deceive Nigerians they voted that man out. Now, instead of using that money that Jonathan got for refugees, they began stealing the money. The man who stole, who allegedly stole the money, Babachir Lawal, the sec secretary to the government of the Federation, what has happened to him? Nothing. Meanwhile, PDP members, meanwhile, people close to pre former President Jonathan, they are hounding them. They are throwing them in detention. And you believe that this government is fighting corruption? Ask yourself questions, people. Ask yourself questions. Look, I want to ask you a question. Imagine the family of, uh, of uh, Mena. They said that the man himself, Mena, had been given DSS security detail. DSS, that is Department of State Security, they gave him the security detail. He was moving around with armed policemen. Was it Jonathan that gave him the armed policemen? Now, this is not Jonathan talking, this is not me talking. It was the family of the man. They gave a press conference. I advise you, look, don't take my word for it. Google, go and read the comments that the family made during the press conference. Was it Jonathan that gave them the security that, that Mena had? The EFCC, they think we are children. They think we are fools. On Monday, they rushed and then they sealed off the house of, uh, of uh, Abdul Rashid Mena. Let me ask you a question. Did the house run away with Mena to Dubai? Did the house run away with Mena when he left the country under Jonathan? Did the EFCC just know the address of the house on Monday? They've known this house has been there. They've known the address of the house since. Why was it when the, when the press exposed this minor issue that they went and sealed off the house? These people, they are not sincere in their fight against corruption. We have to expose them. We have to take our country back from them. These people, they are as corrupt as corruption goes. Now, look at what's happening here. Look at what's happening here. They now came out and said, oh, President Muhammad Buhari was not aware of the reinstatement of the recall, of the recall and of the promotion of uh, Aminu Minor. This was the same, the, the person that said so is uh, Garbashehu, Garbashehu. The same Garbashehu has forgotten that two months ago, he released a statement and said that the president is aware of everything happening in his government. Don't take my word for it. Google that statement. He said that even the, uh, down to minute details, the president is aware of every, everything happening in his government. Now, God I'm asking you, I'm asking you a question. Was your first statement that you made two months ago correct? Or was the statement that you gave two days ago correct? Which one is it? You see, when you lie and lie and lie, you begin to forget what you have said yesterday. And you begin to contradict yourself. 
This administration is so corrupt from top to bottom. All the people surrounding the president, look at them. Look at the corruption allegations that, are, that, that have been leveled against them. What has been done to them? What has been done to them? They keep on hounding former President Jonathan, the former First Lady, uh, PDP uh, people. What has been done to these people surrounding the President? What has been done to Babache Lawal? What has been done to Mena? What has been done to Baru? Imagine the former CBN governor made allegations against the then uh, uh, management of the NPC that, that about 12 billion was not uh, reconciled with the federation account. It took former President Jonathan two weeks, only two weeks, to set up a pro panel. As a matter of fact, there were three pro panels. There was a there was one pro panel that he set up. Then there was another pro panel that he set up with a member of the APC, Nu Rubadu, and he made him to um, uh, um, to um, head that pro panel. Then there was a third panel. This one was not a panel, it was an independent forensic audit that was given to PricewaterhouseCooper to find out where that money had gone to. Now, ask yourself, 25 billion, that is double, more than double what um, the former CBN governor alleged was uh, not reconciled with the former N with the NNPC under Jonathan. Now, more than double that amount has been said to have been uh, awarded without due process. The man just sat down. They gave contracts to who they want to. Ah, you come, contract. Ah, you come, contract. And then it has been exposed now. Has a pro panel been set up? This is a man that says he is an anti-corruption fighter. Has a pro panel been set up? If it is to arrest and to hound members of the opposition so that they cannot talk, that's what they will do. Can you imagine about, uh, was it last week? Last week, the Director General of the Voice of Nigeria, Osita Okechuku, who is meant to be speaking for all Nigerians, was, this is a Director General of the Voice of Nigeria, was insulting former President Jonathan, telling him to shut up, not to talk, otherwise they will expose him. What kind of government is this? A man is talking, he is exposing corruption, he is exposing lies, you are telling him to shut up or you expose him. Are you a dictatorship? Are you a dictatorship? Is this, the, is this what has happened to Nigeria? President Jonathan, former President, former President Jonathan signed a Freedom of Information Act. Nigerians are entitled to information. You cannot be threatening Nigerians, a former president, not to talk. Look, this country is going down the drain. It is not a matter of PDP. It's not a matter of APC. This man, Muhammad Buhari, is completely inept. It is, he, the man is completely inept. The man lied to you, Nigerians, that he had to go and borrow money from a bank to pay for his APC presidential nomination form in 2014. It was later that we found out that all his children were schooling in England. He had about four children schooling in England. This was a man who said that he had to borrow money to pay for the five million for the AMPP, for the APC presidential nomination form. Who was paying the school fees of his four children that were in England? Who was paying the money, the school fees? Do you know how much it, it is to I schooled in England? Do you know how much it is to school in England? It will cost you about it will cost your parents about maybe a hundred thousand pounds a year. Who was paying for that amount? Look, don't be deceived, Nigerians. Begin to see this man for who he is. Let us expose this man. Ask questions. Do not allow... How many of, them, how many of us can they kill? Can they kill all of us? Can they arrest all of us? Let us begin to ask questions so that, that in 2019, we remove this inept and this corrupt government. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you.